tensions are letting the air out of the tires of the world economy. World trade volumes are lagging behind global growth. Trade used to grow at roughly double global GDP, 1987 to 2007. Now it barely keeps pace. And global growth is itself anemic. And the decline in global poverty that I referred to, that decline is itself now starting to slow. And in that context, when we're starting to hear some bizarre autarkic rhetoric, when barriers are going up, and when there is a risk that new diseases such as coronavirus will trigger a panic and a desire for, for market segregation that go beyond what is medically rational to the point of doing real and unnecessary economic damage, then, at that moment, humanity needs some government somewhere that is willing at least to make the case powerfully for freedom of exchange. Some country ready to take off its Clark Kent spectacles and leap into the phone booth and emerge with its cloak flowing as the supercharged champion of the right of populations of the earth to buy and sell freely among each other. And here in Greenwich in the first week of February 2020, I can tell you in all humility that the UK is ready for that role. We're ready for the great multi-dimensional game of chess in which we engage in more than one negotiation at once. And we are limbering up to use nerves and muscles and instincts that this country has not had to use for half a century. Secretary of State Liz Truss tells me she has the teams in place. Is that right, Liz? Yes. She has the lawyers, top dollar, I have no doubt, economists, trade policy experts. And if we don't have enough, and if they don't perform, believe me, we'll hire some more. We will reach out to the Commonwealth, which now has some of the fastest growing economies in the world. It was fantastic at the recent Africa Summit 